going to talk about the tongue exclusively. And so the tongue basically is found in the oral cavity and it has three functions. First of all, it moves food around to the uh, teeth so that they can uh, crush and chew and tear it. Uh, the second function for the uh, tongue is it begins deglutition, the act of swallowing when it pushes the food up against the um, soft palate. And then it has taste buds for your sense of gustation, okay? So the sense of taste, it's got nerves that will create the taste buds. All right, so first of all, when you look at the tongue, you should always identify the um, three main specific areas of it, okay? So the three specific areas are the tip, so you just divide it into thirds. So the front part would be the tip. The main part in the middle is called the fundus. That means body or main part. And then we have the root, which is the back end, um, the root of the tongue. So those are the three specific areas. Now, what does the tongue attach to? It goes and attaches to the hyoid bone, which is underneath your mandible, and that's uh, where it attaches. Also, the tongue is held upright in the oral cavity by the lingual frenula, which is dense reg and stratified squamous ET, and that attaches to the mandible bone, so that basically your tongue will not flip over or uh, flip back into your throat area, the oropharynx. All right, so now once you get those main areas identified, what is the tongue made out of? Essentially, it's covered with skin. And so we have skin here. The purple out on the outside is good old thin skin, stratified squamous CT, your epidermis. What's underneath it supporting it, dense irregular CT, which is the orange uh, sort of uh, squiggly line. And then here is what's different about the tongue. There is a big, huge area called the glossal muscle, skeletal muscle, under involuntary control, uh, or would it be voluntary control? You control it. What do you think your tongue does? Is it voluntary or involuntary? Why, well, it's voluntary, because you control its movements um, pretty much all the time, right? Now, when you're asleep, do you really control it? No, um, but basically it still helps you swallow. <clears throat> so it does have an involuntary component to its control also. All right, so the glossal muscle right here is actually the hypodermis. The hypodermis is usually made out of what? Adipose CT, but no, it's replaced by glossal muscle, skeletal muscle, and it's controlled by cranial nerve number 12 and has its own nerve to control it from the brain, and that's called the hypoglossal um, nerve number 12, cranial nerve. All right, so that's the basic organization, what the tongue's made out of. And also the tongue does have sweat glands in it. It's amazing. It has sweat glands in it um, because the tongue moves so much, it wants to cool the organ. And so in your saliva, you will have some sweat, which is basically a pH of five also. So you do have some sweat that's a component of your, um, your saliva. All right, so those are those glands are called ecrine glands from AMP1 with skin. And so they're made out of simple QVT and they're gonna make the um, sweat, the salty sweat. All right, so now another structure that's unique to the tongue are these projections. So if you brush your tongue in the morning or whenever you brush it, you're gonna find these little bumps on it. And the bumps in the front on the apical surface, on the top surface right here, these little bumps are called papillae. And so all of these are different shapes. If you look towards the back, they're bigger and thicker. And then way in the back, sometimes they can even look like spines or like hairs. And so these are epidermal, these are epidermal, um, made out of the epidermis, uh, basically the epidermis and the dermis. And so they're called epidermal papillae, okay? And so what do these things, strange structures do? They basically grip your food and um, they have taste buds in them for your sense of taste. And so there's three basic shapes that we have on our tongue. If you have pets at home, look at their tongues because they have these same shapes on their tongues, but some of them predominate more than others. And so always on the front, we have 
these little round ones, little round ones, and they look like circles. And they're very flat, but they're called circumvillate papillae, okay? Circumvillate papillae. And we'll also see this for the cap tongue when we do the dissection in lab. Then in the middle part, in the fundus, the main part, we have ones that almost look like um, little morels or mushrooms. And those are called fungiform um, papillae because somebody thought they looked like morels and so a fungus. And so then the last ones in the back, they're hair-like and filiform always means hair-like. And so these are the filiform papillae. So basically, we're just gonna call them all papillae in our lab test, but in lecture, now you know that we have three different shapes and they all have taste buds in the dermis of the skin right there, right? And so what makes your taste buds? Well, basically we have three nerves coming from the brain, um, cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal, number seven, the facial, and number nine, the glossopharyngeal. And so those are gonna come down and then they come into the tongue and then they make these little round structures in the dermis of the skin and those are your taste buds. And so those are the dendrites just waiting for your food to come in there and stimulate them, all right? So if you have some food back here, here's your Snickers again, your Snickers. And so here comes the nice chocolate. It will diffuse through the skin and then when it comes and hits the uh, taste bud, it creates electricity, and then the electricity will go back up to your brain and say, basically, it will go up to the cerebrum, into the parietal lobe, and it will say what you're eating. And so it says, keep eating it because it's delicious, says Snickers. And so basically, the parietal lobe will store and interpret your sense of taste, gustation, gustation, okay? And so that's where they all go. So nerves five, seven, and nine come in here and they branch off and they go up into these papillae to make your taste buds. And so basically the juices from your foods have to go in here, diffuse in, and then hit the dendrites and that creates the electricity to send it back up to your brain and tell you what you're eating and to keep eating it and stores it for the next time so that when somebody surprises you with a Snickers and you don't know it, then you can say, oh, that's a Snicker, right? So that's all st stored up in the mainframe, that parietal lobe. All right, so basically that's the anatomy and physiology uh, of how the tongue works and how it's put together. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And that would be it for the tongue.